Hi, <clears throat> I'm Alfred Dietham from Mountain Heritage Granite Company, and today I'm going to make a video about splitting granite. Splitting granite is a pretty fundamental part of the stone working process. It occurs more at the at the quarry level. Uh, you know, 18 years as a stonemason, I've done I've done plenty of splitting to be sure, but um, but only occasionally. You know, by the time stone gets to the job site, it's generally process down to a manageable piece um, but up here in the quarry there's a bunch of big blocks that are too big to use too big to move too big to use splitting stone is a pretty efficient means of, of getting it down to size you know the other other means is cutting you can cut with with uh, you know diamond blades or, or wire saws cuttings can be quite a bit slower um while you know while being more precise but it can be more slower and requires a lot more equipment uh you know a handheld cutoff saw demo saw has only cutting depth of about five inches you know anything bigger than that a big bridge saw or something that would occur um you know in a big bigger stone processing facility it's just a phenomenally large piece of equipment so splitting you know, allows you to reduce a stone size fairly quickly, but also with a minimal amount of equipment. Um, this block right here is probably, you know, 3,000 pounds, something like that. I haven't measured it, but um, I'll. What I'd like to do is split this one in half, more or less. You know, get like a 16-inch deep piece that's a nice face over there there's a nice face right there so this would be a, a nice cornerstone but as it is it's it's too heavy for me to move you know to lift with my excavator i managed to drag it out of the woods so what i'm going to do is i'm going to try to make this thing split right down the middle granite splits very nicely due to the fact that it's in a, an igneous stone and uh, it's, you know, it's, it's fundamentally a bunch of crystals, so you can, you can split the stone in most any dimension that you'd, you'd like. Um, you know, other, other material, you know, that I use as a stonemason is a metamorphic type schists, which is, you know, occurs rather commonly here in Vermont. And, um, you know, that comes out in layers you know, so you can split it on those layers. It's easy to, to reduce it down to the height, but you can only really split it in that one dimension. Sedimentary type, you know, sandstones and stuff. Uh, they'll also split really easily in those layers. But, um, and you can go across the grain a little better. So gr granite being more granular, crystallized, you can generally split it in most any dimension that you want, though it still has tendencies you know each individual stone you know will have a way that it kind of wants to, to split the other day i split split a block split it one way and it was perfect you know it was it was the best split yet you know it was two feet deep and and you know wasn't more than half inch of variation throughout that surface but then i tried to split it perpendicular to that initial split and I, I got it, you know, I was making a step, um, I got the split, but it, there was a big, um, there was a big cup in it, it like, like a four inch variation in that, in that surface. So, um, yeah, generally you can get what you want out of the stone, but the stone being a natural product, you know, it's still going to do what, what it wants to do. So th this stone may have a few curve balls for me. It's got this big cutout right here. I'm gonna to try to go more or less right down the middle. This back portion shouldn't be a problem. It's pretty well balanced. Uh, equal amount of material on either side of the intended split. But down here, you know, this this big cutout right here may be too close to the split, and I may end up having it having the split, you know, bend out towards um, towards the edge there, you know. 
we'll see. You know, all we can do is, is try. And if you know if that if that occurs, we just gotta just gotta split it again. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is mark out the stone. I'll mark a line parallel to that face, more or less. You know, that's a pretty pretty rough space. I'll mark a line coming down down the front. That's parallel to that face. The next thing I'll do is trace the line. I use a, a carbide tipped hand tracer. It's a chisel. Um, I get that from Trow and Holden. I get all my tools from Trow and Holden and Barry. Um, what tr tracing the line will do is kind of establish a, a weaker plane. So once I start, once I start splitting, uh, you know that fracture will will be be guided right from the right from the start. Um, and it, I think it generally helps, you know, create a create a nice flat split. Once I get the line traced, I'll mark out, you know, the intervals for um, for the holes that I'll be drilling. And I'm using half inch or feathers and wedges for a half inch hole. And so uh, and I'll do those probably four inches on center. You do four, six inches, seven, eight, nine. You know, it really depends on on the stone. Um, you know, and the, and the intended quality. Uh, this is a pretty thick stone, so I'm gonna want it. You know, I'm gonna want those holes closer together. If if it were thinner, you know, I could get away with. Uh, you know, having having the holes further apart. So I'll drill those holes. I'll set up my feathers and wedges, and I'll I'll start driving the uh, start driving the the wedges, and we'll see if we can't get this thing to open up. All right, now it's time to trace this line. I mean, it's slightly time consuming, but it's, you know, but it's worthwhile. I usually give each spot a few whacks. Uh, you know, the first whack kind of makes that the entire edge of the chisel contact the stone. You know, because there's a lot of variation in the surface. So the first strike kind of knocks off those high spots. And then the second strike, once the chisel's you know fully contacting the stone, that second or third strike can really put the energy into the stone. You can feel it too in the chisel. Um, first few strikes you can kind of feel the chisel bounce around a little bit but once you know once you're really getting that energy into the stone like the, the chisel doesn't really move um, you, can, you, you, know, you can feel the energy pass right through career I used to miss pretty often and uh, my hands healed up I mean there's still a tremendous amount of scars but uh, you know for a while it was like a continuous ring of scars that surrounded my chisel hand and uh, I still miss occasionally to be sure but but it's not as uh, common of an occurrence anymore which I'm thankful for Additionally, this wider shank, you know, is a little easier to hit. The double tap thing I do is really just a muscle memory thing for me. started doing it. It's really hard for me to not do it. So going, going down the face is a little trickier because uh, you know, the ergonomics of the swing aren't really, aren't really that great. So I'll, I'll do the best I can. I, you know, I found that you know tracing lines on a vertical surface doesn't go as well for me as, as on the horizontal, but 
do the best I can. Also, working out of position, much more uh, liable to, to miss strike that way. Again, I've been pretty fortunate, but um, I'm gonna miss the chisel. It's gonna be like this. All right, so now it's time to drill the holes. And for years I've been using this little Makita Roto Hammer. It's an SDS plus shank. Um, this is rated to an inch and an eighth hole, something like that. But it's tremendously slow going with a hole that big. I'm settled on uh, half inch feathers and wedges with this drill because I can I can drill half inch holes pretty productively. Much bigger. I have, I have a set for five eighth inch holes too. But it just takes, um, and it takes almost twice as long to drill a 5 8 inch hole. You know, when I start drilling, PPE is obviously a pretty important thing. This granite dust is pretty nasty stuff. Silica. Um, you know, I'll be wearing a dust mask and uh, eyeglasses, obviously. Hearing protection. Um, no sense. I don't make enough money doing this to justify putting my body on the line, so... That's why I try to take care of it to the best of my ability. Um, yeah, I'm gonna mark out the holes. I'm gonna go four inches on center with these holes because of the stone's so thick. And uh, yeah, then I'll drill them. feathers and wedges in these holes. Grab a pair of feathers, put them together, start the wedge in between them, drop them down in the hole, get the feathers to the right height, and then I kind of push the um, push the wedge down in there too. This is the fun part. Stone is marked, stone is traced, stone is drilled, feathers and wedges are installed. So now it's time to start driving these in. And uh, it doesn't really require much, much effort or much force with the hammer. You know, big, big wax aren't really necessary. The steel on these uh, wedges are quite soft deforms easily, chips off really easily. And you know, I found that when I 
you know, when I strike them too hard, I just beat up my wedges and going back and forth, you know, applying an even pressure across that split, I think it tends to be more beneficial than, you know, than big wax. Um, You know, while I listen to music and podcasts and books on tape and everything all day, I generally take the earbuds out so I can listen to what's going on with the split. Um, you know, the tone, the tone produced by these can kind of be indicative of the amount of pressure that's on there on each wedge, you know, and if they all sound more or less the same, then you can be fairly confident that you have more or less the same amount of pressure across the split. Yep, just break your way across gently. No big strikes really necessary, right? At least I haven't found, unless I'm trying to use too few um, feathers for too big of a split. I also, I also tend to start on what I, anticipate being the, the strongest part of the stone, you know, which in this case is back here where the stone is thicker. I, you know, I feel like there's less of a chance of a, of a blowout that way. Um, you know, I think this split would, you know, it'll go down, down through the entire stone back here rather than trying to escape off, off to the side up here. starting to form but you can really hear it once the stone starts opening up these strikes will start sounding hollow and we're getting there There it goes. So that split <clears throat> went pretty well. It didn't blow off to the side like I thought it might. That's a relief. Um, yeah, there's a, a little bit of a dish in it, but it doesn't matter. Actually, I don't even really know what I'm gonna use this rock for. Uh, be a nice cornerstone in a retaining wall or something like that. I could keep splitting it up further. There's plenty of things I could do with this stone, but now it's more manageable with the machine. Nor normally I, I, I catch, normally it doesn't open up like this, um, or at least I can anticipate that. It and I can get all my feathers and wedges out, most of them out, before it opens. But now it's opened up. And they've... I mean, I don't know if you can see them down there, but... You know, it's just a pile of feathers and wedges. So now i got to uh, retrieve those. And just a little bit of a uh, yeah, housekeeping thing that I do. I have my bucket here, feathers and wedges. And I try not to put them in, the pieces in, individually. I always try to put them in as a group of three, two feathers, one wedge. That way, um, that way I'm more likely to catch, you know, a, a missing piece. 
and individually, you know, they're not they're not that that expensive, but collectively, you know, it's quite a bit of money. You know, 30, 30 sets of for these half inch holes cost me like two hundred fifty dollars, and so I just uh, I'd rather not lose all my pieces, and so try to be disciplined about about you know putting everything back.